Welcome back to the Gotti Video Podcast. This is a space where you host conversations with different designers, architects, and industry thought leaders to help educate you and your work. My name is Joe Agati, and I'm the COO and Director of Design here at Agati Furniture. For today's episode of the podcast, we're back here with BLDD Architects. I have the opportunity to talk with John Whitlock and Carson Durham, who are both principals at BLDD, a leading architecture firm passionate about the power of design to change the world. Specifically, BLDD does majority of their work in higher education, senior living, K-12, through and religious spaces. In the conversation today, we're going to be exploring the topic of collaborative spaces. John, it's great to have you back with us on the show. Carson, it's great to have you for the first time. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you very much. Look forward to it. So, like I was saying before, John, you were uh, you're the first uh, uh, twice contestants on this show here. It's a lofty honor. I, yeah, I hope there'll be a medal or something I can wear. We'll get you a nice participation plaque afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> That'll work. So, uh, as you know, the drill. Um, I guess I'd just like to start with a little background, and Carson, we'll probably start with you first. Sure, that'd be that'd be great. Um, Carson can probably already tell he talks funny. So there's that. You got to start with that. <laughs> uh, that's true. Uh, so uh, originally from the great state of Georgia, uh, went to school mm -hmm. in the South and uh, studied architecture uh, at Georgia Tech um, many, many years ago and uh, have been working um, in the architectural design uh, profession for about 30 something years now. Um and been a being a, been a creative type my entire life since I was six years old. I was always always been a maker, if you will. And so, um, and so I've been uh, mostly my work in the architectural field has been in the design uh, aspects of it. I, I am a resident architect. I am a you know uh, can produce architectural drawings in that way. But the biggest role that I've had at BLDD and over the last twenty five years is doing design work, uh, some initial planning uh, to the completion of a project. So that's 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 my passion and uh, some of my gifts. So um, th that comes out in, in, in my work. Nice. Excellent. Being very humble because he's a heck of an artist as well. He does some pretty amazing things. Nice. Do you so art? Is that kind of on the side drawing, painting, something like that? Or? Well, I, I am also I actually am a painter as well. So oh. I uh, I'm, a, you know, I do it for um, do it for a little, believe it or not, for release from, you know, the sort of, uh, uh, technical aspects of architecture. So, um, if you will. And so, yeah, I do a lot of abstract painting, um, both oil and acrylic, acrylic paint. So it's, it's something that, uh, really helps me stay engaged in terms of the creative process. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely need those, uh, releases. For sure. Absolutely. And then, John, I know we've had you on the show before. Maybe you just give us a quick little background on yourself for people that haven't seen the previous one. Absolutely. Um, and unfortunately, it's not as cool as Carson's. That's, that's, that's unfortunate. <laughs> but I am pretty smart in one way, is that I've tied my anchor to Carson so that every project that I'm a part of, I like <laughs> to have Carson on my team so that great things happen. And so when we talk about these collaboration areas, it's because of his brilliance and his design eye that really makes those things happen. My job is to make sure that we the client is happy, that the project is on time, on schedule, on budget, all yeah. of those sort of things. So I've been doing this at BLDD since 1994. I'll be in my 30th year here this this in 2024. Um, and my role is management. So I do manage projects. I work a lot in the education market, mostly in the education market, K through 12 and higher education. Again, for the last 30 years, doing that management piece of the work. OK, great. Yeah, and like you were kind of talking about before, we wanted to talk about collaboration spaces today. And, you know, first I wanted to kind of get your guys' take. We've noticed that, you know, we're call it, let's say, three years behind the start of a pandemic, um, you know, going into a fourth year. And we've seen we've seen a shift of people wanting to get back into spaces, especially on the education side. And, you know, I've given trend talks where it's like, you know, I remember like 2014, 15, it was all about collaboration, collaboration. Then it's like, oh, now we need individual, individual. Now we're kind of like, seems like we're trending back towards that. It's like the pendulum never hits the middle. It's always like one side or the other. Are you guys absolutely. seeing a similar pattern in, in your work there? We, ab we absolutely are. You know, and you brought up the pandemic and then the pandemic said, okay, we can't get together. And so what do we do, especially with these existing spaces? How do we deal with our existing spaces when yeah. we can't get together? How do we separate? And so we had to live through that. 
And now you're right. Everybody does want to get back together in some mm -hmm. way. And in reality, it's in their preferred way. Um, it's not one size mm. fits all. Um, and yeah. you have to be very intentional about these spaces so that they are effective. And again, I'll bring it up, send it over to Carson to talk about his thought process for these areas. But again, being intentional, making it easy mm -hmm. for people to utilize those collaboration areas. Um, like I said earlier, we we don't want to have to have people walking over walls, climbing over walls to get to these things. We want to make it very simple and e easy for people. Yeah. yeah. I think that's very true. I think um, the, the word John mentioned that's really important is the intentional piece. We used to think that when we did a collaboration space, if you build it, they will come. If you build a collaboration space, <laughs> they will collaborate. Uh, <clears throat> that's no longer the case. I mean, because they can, they can, you know, collaborate over a computer screen. Mm hmm equally as well as they can as you know being in person so you've got to you've got to create a space that is compelling for them that yeah. offers those folks things that they don't currently have at their fingertips maybe at home or at some separate space if you will and so uh, the idea of creating understanding and listening to what type of collaboration they're doing mm -hmm. uh, and the things that are at their fingertips the things that are around them are supportive for mm -hmm. them, whether it be the furniture that they're using, the tables they're using, the whiteboards that are close by, yeah. the computer that they're using, the camera that if they're doing a podcast like we're doing here. So it's really important to, to listen to the uniqueness yeah. of what the collaboration is. And, um, you know, the idea is, is it, a, is it, is it collaborating around a project or is it collaborating yeah. around uh, intellectual property? Are you mm -hmm. making a widget? Are you, yeah. are you, uh, are you, what are you actually doing? And then making sure we're really, in, again, back to that intentional word, um, you know, we're being intentional about supporting those efforts with our collaboration. Yeah. And I think also what's important is the flexibility of those spaces because mm -hmm. what somebody needs on Monday may not be what they need on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So that flexibility of a space that allows for individual study, but that mm -hmm. can grow into a group project area or even a large assembly area yeah. is I think important. And so how you sort of engage all of those areas so that again, Monday to Wednesday, they may have completely different needs, but they all are effective for that, for that use. Yeah. Yeah, that makes, I mean, that makes sense. I want to jump back to <clears throat> one thing, uh, Carson, you were talking about collaboration in that, you know, like I've, I've noticed that now that we're kind of the pendulums back on the collaboration side is that, you know, five, six, seven, eight years ago, it was kind of, it was more so like everything was focused around collaboration around tech. It's like yep. throw That's the media true. station down, put the TV on the wall, everybody plug monitors in. And it was really, everything was really heavy tech. And then really heavy collaboration. And I think it was like really skewed to one side. Um, I've kind of noticed that people are, you know, it's like tech's a component, but then I kind of say, like, well, there's like a low or no tech kind yeah, of, absolutely. so people are working together. And then there's like, you know, I think people kind of get confused, like maybe not confused, but like, are you noticing like a pattern of like, yeah, it's not collaboration, but it's just like, I just want to work with people, you know? Yes, absolutely. And so it's not yeah. collaboration necessarily. It's like, social working or something happening in there are you seeing like one are you seeing those kind of three patterns are you seeing something else that's maybe not you know that you know maybe we have no i think i think that you know what we're seeing is the ability for people to make a space their own whether it be in a in a mm -hmm. messy way if you will you, yeah i think you're talking about that yeah you know can i can i do i have the right kind of space to sort of spread my things out and, um, you know, uh, and, and they connect with in that way. But mm -hmm. we're we're putting less and less tech, frankly, in our collaboration spaces. Interesting. To be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, you know, because people have their own they have their own devices. Um, and, and if we do have tech in there, it's got to be easily connected. But I back to your question about this idea of, uh, you know, uh, collaboration within sight of someone within feeling like you're within a community. Uh, yeah. an intellectual community, even though I'm separate or my, I want to be heads down and I don't want to be bothered. Yeah. Uh, I still want to feel like I'm part of the community. Mm -hmm. And we're also seeing designing uh, collaboration spaces so that I can be noticed by other people. So if, if they, mm. uh, the idea of mentorship, the idea of, uh, you know, um, being able to see a colleague that might offer some help to me uh, when I need them. I think it's, it's really, we've seen, uh, you know, sort of the idea of creating larger spaces mm. that have acoustically separated small components to them 
so that I can be mm. acoustically isolated, but I can see what's going on around me, what other ideas, and if I can if I can want to turn up the volume of what I want to hear around me, I yeah. can do that. So acoustics and um, the shaping of spaces relative to that seem to be a mm -hmm. stronger trend for us as well, and both in terms of, of furniture and walls and, and and that kind of stuff. Again, it's uh, if 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 someone can make a space their own, they're gonna they're gonna make the most <clears> of it, right? Um, and they they like to be around other people while they're doing it. Yeah, can I, I want to go back on like, I uh, want to pick up one thing you said, because that's not something that I've kind of really heard before, but it's like, it's the being noticed part. Yeah. So can you like expand on that a little bit more? Where, where are you getting at? Yeah, that? absolutely. I mean, what we found is like, um, you know, if, if, especially in the, in the business world, but also in the, the academic world is mm -hmm. you want people that may be a teacher or an instructor mm. or even someone, a coworker or even a boss or, or someone like that to see what you're doing that you, you know, we inherently want them to notice you. They want to, you want to, them to notice you as a, a good employee or as a good in student, mm -hmm. but also the idea of, 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 of being able to, to sort of watch what they are doing, the other people are doing as, um, as a guide to what you should be doing. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, and because the isolation of the COVID basically removed that from the world, right? That yeah. removed that from the possibility of, well, I, 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 I like what so-and-so is doing over there. Can I learn more from you on that? Or I like what they're doing. Let me come into my office and talk to me about mm -hmm. what you're up to. Um, so, um, you know, in the educational world, it's, it's really about making sure that you're, understanding what your colleagues are doing, what the fellow students are doing. So the noticing of other people's activities, I think, is really important. Yeah. Yeah. The At the higher education level, um, we, we refer to this as the see and be seen yeah. sort of idea. Mm -hmm. And and the idea is, is that not only are you seeing what's going on around you, but there may be services. There may be people taking advantage of things in a, in a community, whether it's a building or, or if it's along a path so that you, um, while you're engaging in these spaces, you understand that, wait, I didn't realize that that was available to me over there. So the transparency created around these collaboration areas can open up options and yeah. opportunities to people that are in those areas. So, I mean, I think it goes to, we have this philosophy in, in, in the educational world, there's sort of self-guided educational approaches, in other words, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and these spaces have to foster that self-guided approach. And I think it, it relates to what I'm I'm more likely to be a self-guided self-learner in in the way if I I see some evidence of it happening mm -hmm. somewhere else right um, and so I I think that it's sort of all related it's it's collaboration among a community but mm -hmm. yet they're separated you know physically by maybe a few feet or uh, a few yards if you will mm -hmm. interesting yeah that's I. <clears throat> Yeah, and I guess I never thought about it in that way. You know, I've kind of observed, you know, the social working aspects and I've kind of focused it around the group there, but not about from what the kind of prospect around the environment of of kind of how that interworks. Yeah, that's a, 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 a that's a very interesting kind of take on that. Yeah. Well, it's very easy, especially after COVID for students, higher education, again, even mm -hmm. K through 12, to get so involved with their own, what they're doing, their heads down, sure. right? Yeah. And so... And you can get lost, you can get behind. Mm -hmm. And if you're in these sort of areas where you see other people doing things that are similar, then now you can re out, reach out to them and sort of learn from them or you know, create a study group. In other words, take your little individual study and now we've created a collaboration area. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important because I think right after COVID, people sort of got lost and forgot how to do that, how to communicate yeah. with their friends, how to yeah. just understand that there are these opportunities available to them. Yeah. Um, and this, they need to open themselves up to that opportunity again. Yeah. And, and, and you know, and my bias is because I am a, I am a, I, I think by doing, I think by creating, mm -hmm. I think by, um, you know, making things and, and, and inventing things. And so, I think that um, these these types of collaboration spaces are very different than a glass, you know, a glass wall yeah. space with a table in the middle of it. Uh, and uh, we we've, we've seen that um, that that's that's more more effective to think mm -hmm. about it in terms of if 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 you if you do by if you're thinking and learning by making is 
these types of spacers foster mm-hmm. that kind of that kind of activity. Um, and uh, you know, uh, it's just another way of thinking about um, the you know the, the idea of collaboration. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So going back to what you were talking about, <clears throat> John, and um, you were starting to talk about flexibility. Um, you know, I've used this pendulum example and, you know, it seems like, yes, we're, we're getting, you know, we're drifting a little more away from individual. That was a really heavy trend, you know, pre and through pandemic, we're getting a little more towards collaborative. Like, you know, I always tell people like, let's not try to keep it balanced as much as possible. How do you guys go about trying to do that? Trying to find the balance between the collaborative or group and individual is that how flexibility kind of comes in to what you were talking about earlier? There's a couple different ways. Um, what we're talking about is sort of the third space, right? So you've got the programmatic spaces and you have your circulation spaces and everybody used to escape to the library. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then we created all these other areas for people to be in the library it became an empty space. And so we had to rethink libraries. Um, when you're talking about individual space, group spaces, large group spaces, Part of it is through the empathy phase of design thinking, where you are really sort of engaging it with the students and the staff that are maybe in that Mm -hmm. facility now and seeing how they gather and how they and what they're missing. Um, That's part of, you know, sort of learning what that is that they will sort of be attracted to. Um, But you're right. The idea of, you know, because you take up space, you have an individual learning study space. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that takes up more space than if I have, you know, four people. I mean, you're you're per proportions are off when it comes to that. Yeah. So, but the idea of having just breakout areas for people to gather quickly, soft seating areas, p- places where people are comfortable, but it is, it becomes a programmatic conversation. It's not just these throwaway areas. They, they have to be thought through. They have to be intentional. Uh, and it's really talking with the staff and the students about what it is that they need, what they want, um, and really coming up with what you can fit within the budget. <laughs> yeah. So that's really, that's important. I think that I think there are fewer of them. I think there are, we're doing fewer and fewer what I would call two person and three person small rooms, if you will. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, I think that um, because of some tech, because of earphones, you can be in your own space. I don't care if you're in Yankee Stadium, if you will. Mm-hmm. Right. You can you can be in your own space. And so I would say to you that we when we're when we're counseling our clients on how many or the quality of those spaces to do. Yeah. Um, we are we are we're doing fewer and fewer of those. We are uh, we're more likely to give someone a larger space mm-hmm. that we can give some you know give some flexibility to. Yeah, than we would to build five or six smaller spaces, right? In fact, they're getting even, you know, like we call them phone booths. You know what a phone booth is, yeah. right? So we're we're doing uh, uh, we're doing several of those, but not as not as many as 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 you would think. So. Um, you know, I, I think our our counsel to our clients is um, is fewer and fewer of those individual spaces. If we can do sort of medium to larger spaces the right way acoustically, and have those tools at your fingertips, um, those are those are those are better spaces to 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 invest in because uh, it does give you that it gives you that flexibility. So, and you, you can see students wanting them. And going back to my higher ed experience. All you have to do is walk through an existing building that's probably 20, 30 years old, could be 50 years old, and they're just students sitting on the floor yeah, throughout the corridors, right? So they, yeah. they want to space. They're asking for a space. It's not hard to find. And so and m- many times it is cramming for, you know, the, the exam that's going to be in that room in five minutes, or it's just a group of five people sitting there talking. And so creating spaces for them that's easy, that's comfortable. I mean, they're asking for it. You can see it. Yeah, I always love the the pictures of, you know, it gets like, oh, we want to develop this space. And you see everybody kind of like sitting around. I'm like, oh, this is like, you don't even know what kind of gold you have here in this picture. You're clearly, right. clearly like, you know that this space is desired. Now you just need to make it functional. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> I think for the business world, though, I think um, the, the individual um, head down type of spaces or um or there's there's probably more of those needed than maybe an educational space if you will um so i think that if you're if you're talking about the differences there Mm -hmm. um you know i i i think um you know you mentioned earlier that we do some religious uh projects Mm -hmm. um i think you know that's 
you know, uh, that whole experience is about collaboration, is mm-hmm. about complete community. And and I, I can tell you that we're building large rooms uh, for those types of facilities mm-hmm. way before we're building individual what I would call classroom spaces. Um, mm-hmm. And because it is so much about community. And it's also yeah. what we found is after COVID, people are starving for those uh, you know, uh, to be in, in large groups and mm-hmm. have sort of large group um, connections uh, mm-hmm. via educational pieces or whatever, it, whatever it might be. So thinking through like collaboration spaces, what what elements would you say make a space more effective versus less effective? I mean, I know we've touched on a few here, but if you had to kind of like put all together, sum it up. Well, I I I like to think that transparency is important Mm -hmm. um you know the ability to be seen and and see so you know certainly glass enclosures are closures that are less um less solid if you will i think Mm -hmm. are really essential uh i mean you know um in terms of of collaboration spaces so that you feel like you're connected to a larger group of of something mm-hmm. yeah um, glass is a nice little tool you can write on glass exactly you know? the idea that <laughs> the idea that you can um and, and frankly it's essential that you offer the idea that it's a little messy to be honest with you you can yeah. sort of that it's that it's it's not so uh pristinely designed uh that you know you're almost like in a, sort of <clears> a <throat> museum if you will so i think that's ins- think about it in terms of uh, of, of being able to make it a little messy, uh, I think is yeah. essential as well. And then acoustics, I think, I mean, mm. I think the idea of controlling acoustics, um, mm-hmm. is, is really important too, you know, for the, for the people that are introverts, frankly, that, you yep. know, that, that, that lots of loud music and lots of loud conversations can affect them. Um, I think, I think that's, you know, those are some of the essentials that, that I know that I think about. Yeah. When, you know, transparency, messiness, and, you know, making sure that acoustics work well. Uh, on the subject oh, of, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, well, on the subject of acoustics, is we get asked that a lot. And again, we're furniture people, so we're right. not acoustic experts. What do you, what do you suggest some like good ways to kind of manage that? Maybe besides obvious of like carpet and you know, treating the ceiling, like what are, uh, what are good ways to kind of manage acoustics and yeah, like a collaborative and even a flexible space. It's got to be challenging. Yeah, I, I think the I think the materials is the key. I, I, at least mm. we found. I mean, it didn't. It's no rocket science, really. It's the idea of yeah of making sure the surfaces that are uh, that are are in those spaces are absorptive, frankly, uh, mm-hmm. and um, um, you know they they allow for um, allow for for the absorption of of of, of sound that you don't want to hear. Um, and then and then you know. Um, being strategic about how the shape of a space is, you know, the parallel, mm-hmm. not parallel walls, not a parallel floor and ceiling. Um, so the, the, the mm-hmm. non-parallel surfaces is a simple way to, 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 to reduce, reduce some of that background noise. I think it's a very good comment to bring up because we've all been in, and I won't throw anybody under the bus here, but in restaurants that, you know, they've, this is a really cool environment. They got this open ceiling, you got <laughs> hard floors, you got hard walls, and you cannot communicate with anybody at your table. And you can hear the people three tables over clearly. Yeah. And so it's very, I mean, it's it's very true that if we don't get the acoustics right in any space, they just will not be used. Um, yeah, you know, and true. so they will not be comfortable there. So when I talk about comfortability, it's not just mm-hmm. about furniture, it is about sound. And it, it's really important. And like I said, we've all been there in a restaurant. I'm like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> so um, I think that's one thing. And, and and I think that that messy part, the only thing I'd pile on is being able to write everywhere, um, I think is really helpful in terms of study and giving them those tools to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I also think that that transparency as a, as a building manager, whether it's a higher education facility mm-hmm. or K through 12, um, that transparency allows... Um, less supervision right so that that's yep. a you know a real concern especially at the k-12 through lev- level that we do have monitors but they're not necessarily maybe in that room so that yeah. transparency is also very important for security um mm-hmm. and safety mm-hmm. of the students and, and people using those spaces yeah absolutely um 
So I want to start to put you guys on the spot here a little bit. Um, and I really appreciate you sharing, especially on the acoustics and everything. Um, I wanted to try to get a little more specific examples. And if you guys could think of like projects that have stood out to you that have handled collaboration, you know, in a kind of like new, interesting or functional way. Um, are well, you, I don't know that projects? it's... I know people are always hesitant to, to name names on favorite projects. No, no, no. Well, um, <laughs> we have a couple of high schools here in town that I, I would throw out there because what we've talked about in terms of collaboration, at least my fault, is a little bit too much in student-based. Mm. Um, we forget about the instructors, the teachers, the staff, and their collaboration to do their job well, whether it's team teaching or, you know, um, creating offices. And so that's one of the things we did for MacArthur and Eisenhower High School here in town is they wanted... Um, the superintendent, the the board wanted their teachers to feel like a more professional staff and not just have a classroom if that's their space. Uh, they wanted to create office areas where the math teachers could get together, the social study teachers can get together, and that would facilitate more um, co collaboration and coordination amongst them. The, the mm -hmm. facility also had a lot of opportunities, flexibility with walls that could open up so that you could team teach with larger spaces. Um, so I think those are two examples of something that we just don't see a lot in the K through 12 world because it, it, I think pedagogy would tell you that I have a classroom and that's where I'm going to be. But mm -hmm. that is really sort of negatively impacting their collaboration efforts because you have to get up out of your room, you have to go around, find another classroom, find that teacher and sort of do that work. And so again, going back to being comfortable and making it easy and being intentional, mm -hmm. um, that's not how that typically happens. So in at these two high schools, we created those spaces for them to be able to gather mm -hmm. and be able to co collaborate and work together. Hmm. And I would, I would know that educate high, uh, high school educational spaces are a project that we just completed at Mattoon, Illinois. Uh, um, it's a, a, we call it a lift. Um, and it's a six floor building that has um, all for uh, high school students, but each of the floors have a very uh, a distinct purpose or a distinct use in terms of the academics. So hmm. uh, in each of those spaces have collaboration at the heart of what they're doing. In other words, so the, you know, for instance, the one of the floors, if you will, is a communication floor, which is about producing podcasts, about mm. uh, radio, it's about um, music, it's about you know producing your own uh, types of uh, arts as it relates to music. And so each of those that floor has collaboration spaces that are very different than say the fifth floor, where they are talking about. Um, Leaders, the leadership, what we call the leadership floor. Okay. So the collaboration spaces that we designed for the leadership floor and even the furniture that we designed, the, the things that are around those individuals as they're working together and collaborating is totally different on each floor. Right. And so uh, I think that that floor is really about six floors of different types of collaboration. One of the other floors is uh, a space where students are learning about green energy. So mm -hmm. they collaborate together in a different way because they have things around them. They have, you know, products around them and things that are associated with that. But they also have computer stations that that help with that. So those collaboration spaces are even designed even differently than the other two floors I mentioned. Mm. And so, um, so I think that's a good that's a, a, an example that we've done that um, that takes into account all of these sort of philosophical design approaches that we, we've we've talked about um in a in a very specific way there each of those floors are very intentionally designed for those activities um and the and which makes them you know unique and different um and and very specific yeah, um, and then i would say last thing is we're working on uh, a project at illinois westland uh called the petrick idea center and it's in uh design phases right now and it's the first floor of the building is is a completely um, uh, academic space uh, that's about making uh, entrepreneurship, uh, about inventing products, uh, mm -hmm. uh, understanding what it means to to start a business, mm -hmm. uh, understand what it means to work as a team to build a business or to build a product or come up with an idea. So the idea again, the collaboration piece is if I am collaborating with you about an idea or about coming up with an idea for a business, that's very different than the space where I am actually 
prototyping or making something, collaborating with a colleague. You know, maybe I have a computer science student with me. I have an engineering student with me and I have a, a student that's from the arts area and I'm glad we're collaborating on making this thing, right? Mm -hmm. or, or producing this thing. That's very different than a collaboration that occurred in the business planning opportunity piece yeah. of it. So, so that's a, it's a, a whole floor of, of uh, sort of a spattering of, of different types of collaboration space. And that's all that's on the floor. There's nothing at there's there's a classroom there, but it, it is also flexible for um, mm -hmm. for collaboration as well. So um, those are two projects that have sort of uh, turned this collaboration effort on its head relative to, on one hand, designing very specifically and very intentionally, yeah. but also allowing for, um, as we spoke earlier, right, sort of to make it your own or make it make it. Uh, make it kind of messy. And I think the, the, the other thing that we have found with students is mm -hmm. if we can create a space where they're comfortable and they're able to fail, frankly, they're able yeah. to try an idea yeah. and fail mm -hmm. and then get some feedback on that idea. Mm -hmm. That's collaboration. Then, um, um, then they are more successful in their educational journey. Uh, if they can fail quickly, they can get feedback and they can move on. So that's again, a, that's a collaboration space, right? That's not, that's not your classroom. It's not your office. It's it's a space that is designed uh, for those activities. And and I think we've been pretty successful in doing that. Those are those are two examples that I would I would well, give. We have another example that we worked on together, mm -hmm. uh, Crispin Hall, yes. Illinois College. And I think this is fairly true of most of the projects we have at higher education facilities, whether it's community college, private college. Um, and so Crispin Hall houses the psychology department, computer science department, hmm. physics, and math. And that's their home. And so if you are one of those majors, you are there, you know, pretty much throughout the day. And so um, the facilities they had before were not welcoming. They didn't have those sort of opportunities, people sitting on the floor and people just not being in the building. It was an empty building. Mm -hmm. And so our charge was to fix that, right? And so lots of different things that go in there. The ability to um, have classrooms grow um, so they're dividable. We have some classrooms so that they can do team teaching or do larger mm -hmm. classes. Um, I think one of the, you know, of course, there are breakout areas. There's different types of collaboration areas on each floor, whether it's along a corridor or in a little nook. Uh, we have those areas. Um, one of the interesting things in the physics department, they wanted to be more open um, and collaborate mm -hmm. together and more um, available to students. And so there's literally, they have an office suite but they have barn their their offices are along the corridor and they have barn doors that are open to the corridor. So there are certain times of the day that all students know that those doors will be open. And so that they can just quickly, you know, leave the physics lab and come over and talk to a professor and and have those sort of um opportunities. Um I think is really unique and interesting. Um anything else about that? No, I think you designed it. No, I think I think it's collaboration at threshold, if you know what I mean. You know, yeah. every sort of door has a our opening has a threshold. And so uh, the idea there is that that we, we create these sort of sliding doors and that, you know, you don't necessarily have to be in the professor's office. You're actually in the hallway and you're you're just sort of having a quick conversation at the threshold uh, of, of the hallway in the office. And I, I think that's a and it seems to be very successful. It goes back to the I, the philosophy of, you know, of openness and easy and transparent and all that kind of thing. And so. And it, it's really a simple solution. You just add a barn door to the hallway, <laughs> and uh, it feels it feel it feels it feels pretty welcoming. So. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, I like and I like the aspect you talked about, uh, kind of creating that space where students can fail. You know, and, like having a background in product design. You know, I always been joking. Oh yeah, you're always failing your way to success. Like <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know. And I and I and back to the earlier point we made the idea of is of of. Watching, you can be able to watch one of your fellow students fail, if you mm -hmm. know what I mean. It's like, well, the, he seems to be still breathing, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so that's, I think that sort of connection of the entire community of, of, of people that, uh, you know, fail and explore and, and, and get better is, is, is really important as well. Yeah. Life lesson, really. Yeah. You know? I mean, <clears throat> as a designer, you know, there's nef not necessarily always black and white there's gray yeah. and so sometimes yeah. there's not always a right answer and sometimes you don't get it right and and we need our students and you know employees that are designers to understand that you know we have to practice and fail so mm -hmm. we get it right um yeah be comfortable with that <laughs> yes there's life after failure <laughs> yeah yeah well i really appreciate the time today guys this has been really enlightening 
Um, I want to put you in the spot one last time and just hit you both up for words of wisdom, piece of advice for people in our audience. You can go ahead. Well, I, I think that, that the, the, you know, the advice that I would give is, you know, listen first, you know, mm -hmm. listen mm -hmm. to, and I know it's, uh, um, listen to the, the world around you, listen to your client, listen to, you know, students, be a visual person uh, mm. in terms of, of human behavior. Um, and then, you know, and, and use that, use that as the background before you make a move. So listen first is, is something mm -hmm. and I, I think most creative people understand the idea of, of, of listening first. Um, and then don't have any, my other thought is I, I always go into a problem solving, a, a problem solving session, if you will, with no preconceived notions. Mm, I try mm -hmm. to wipe the bl the the slate uh, blank before I before I work work on a particular project or try to come up with some new ideas or solve a problem. Um, you know, try not to get into the trap of a of a preconceived notion mm -hmm. of how this how this may occur because I think you you might lose the that one nugget that um, that that makes a huge difference mm -hmm. in whatever you're. So those are those are some some things I think about when I approach a problem. Yeah, it makes sense. I think I like to, I like to remind our young people um, that we have an opportunity to be very impactful in mm -hmm. somebody's life, in a community's life, in a college's you know, life. Um, and so take that very seriously and care that what we are doing is important and we, it deserves our very best. And I just think that that is a passion that you have to have to be a designer. Mm -hmm. um, and what Carson talked about, that empathy side, listening is extremely important. No preconceived ideas are all very important, but you have to care more than everybody else to make sure you get it right because it matters. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I really appreciate the time today, guys. Those are great, I think, words of wisdom um, in there. Uh, and I want to thank you both. All right. Thank, thank you, you very you. much.